Hello everyone, welcome to Oridia Lucas's tutorial. Today we are going to discuss the obstetric ultrasound examination guidelines during the second and the third trimester. So first of all, we are going to discuss the amniotic fluid volume. The amniotic fluid index is obtained by dividing the gravid uterus into the four coordinates and uh, measuring the depressed fluid pocket without the fetal parts or the umbilical cord in each quadrant and uh, adding the four measurements together. The AFI of uh, less than 5 to 8 cm for diagnosing the oligohydrominose and uh, greater than 24 cm for diagnosing the polyhydrominose. Now in the sonogram we can see the amniotic fluid index measurement and the depressed fluid pockets without the fetal parts or the umbilical cord has been measured in each quadrant of the gravid uterus and the four measurements the first one is 6.5 cm, the second one is 6.3 cm and third one is uh, uh, 7.04 cm and the fourth measurement is about 7.09 cm and some of all these measurements is about 26.6 cm and it is consistent with the mild polyhydrominose as the normal AFI range from 9 to 24 cm. The single depressed fluid pocket method is the most commonly used semi-quantitative method in pregnancies with more than one gestation. And the single depressed pocket is considered too small if it is less than 2 cm and uh, it is too large if it is greater than 8 cm. Now in this case we can see the twin gestations and uh, this is the fetus one and its measurement is about 4.4 cm along its depressed pocket and uh, the second fetus here lies and uh, its depressed pocket measurement is about 4.5 cm. Both the fetus one and the fetus two have the normal amniotic fluid volume. Now we are going to discuss the relationship of the placenta to the internal cervical os. This one is the longitudinal transabdominal image of the lower uterus. Here we can see the placenta is uh, present anteriorly and uh, this one is the cervical os and uh, the placenta is uh, present away from the cervical os. And uh, now here we can see the placenta present in the posterior wall and uh, it is just away from the internal cervical os this type of placenta is called the marginal placenta and here the bladder is also visible in the sonogram. Now we are going to discuss the umbilical cords and the vessels the normal umbilical cord contains the two arteries and one vein. The number of vessels in the umbilical cord is determined by counting the blood vessels in the two cross section of the cord. Now in the sonogram we can see the normal three vessel cord and uh, this is the cross section of the umbilical cord and it shows the two arteries and uh, which have the narrow lumen and uh, one vein which has a longer diameter than the arteries and it is consistent with the three vessel cord. Now in the sonogram we can see the fetal pelvis with the color Doppler view at the level of the urinary bladder. This one is a urinary bladder and uh, it shows the umbilical arteries along the lateral margins of uh, both sides of the urinary bladder. Now this one is an interesting case and it shows the two vessel cord. This is the axial image of the umbilical cord. It shows the one artery with the narrow lumen and one vein with the greater diameter and it is consistent with the single umbilical artery. Now this image of the fetal pelvis shows a color Doppler at the level of the urinary bladder which is present here and it shows the umbilical artery along the lateral surface of one side of the fetal bladder and uh, no umbilical artery along the contralateral surface was seen and it is consistent with a single umbilical artery. Now in this sonogram we can see the placental umbilical cord insertion. That this is a transverse image of the uterus with the color Doppler and uh, it shows the right lateral placenta with the normal insertion of the umbilical cord into the placenta. Now here we can see a velamentous cord insertion. This one is a longitudinal transabdominal image of the uterus. We can see a color Doppler which shows the umbilical cord insertion separate from the placental substance and it is consistent with the velamentous cord insertion. The blood vessels travel along the membranes of the uterine wall and these are unprotected by the umbilical cord to supply the placenta. Now in this sonogram we are going to discuss the measurement of uh, BPD and uh, this is the axial image of the fetal head and it shows the thalami 
and these two structures are the thalami and here we can see a uh, cavum septum pellucidum and uh, these are the cerebellar hemispheres and uh, here we can see the bpd measurement from the outer edge of the calvarium to the inner edge of the far field calvarium and the measurement should be obtained at the measurement of the thalami and the cavum septum pellucidum the head shape may be flattened dolicocephaly or the rounded which is called the brachycephaly as the normal variant under these circumstances the certain variants of the normal fetal head development may take the measurements of the head circumference more reliable than the biparietal diameter for estimating the gestational age now in the sonogram we can see the measurement of the head circumference and this is the axial image of the fetal head at the same level as we have measured the biparietal diameter and uh, here we can see that uh, the calipers are placed along the outer edges of the head for the measurement of the head circumference and it was repositioned as we have measured the biparietal diameter now we are going to discuss the measurement of the femur length femur length is measured by positioning the calipers on the edge of the proximal and the distal portion of the diaphysis and possible the femur should be placed perpendicular to the ultrasound beam during the femur length measurement and the epiphyseal cartilage which is present here it should not be included in the measurement now we are going to discuss the abdominal circumference measurement and the fetal abdomen is measured in the axial plane at the level of the stomach and when possible a curve shaped vascular structure uh, comprising the junction of the umbilical portion of the left portal vein with the portal sinus and the right portal vein should be seen and the abdomen should exhibit a rounded configuration and here we can see it measures about 24.3 cm which is corresponding to 28 weeks and 4 days now we are going to discuss a very interesting case uh, febrile during a pregnancy this one is a longitudinal image of the uterus at 24 weeks gestation and it shows the anterior placenta and a retro peritoneal fibroid is present with the peripheral rim of calcifications with proper acoustic shadowing and the fetal abdomen is also visualized here now here we can see a transverse image of the gravid uterus in a patient with 34 weeks and two days of gestation and it shows exophytic fibroid and uh, the patient is presented with the right abdominal pain at the 34 weeks and 2 days and uh, we can see here the ultrasound with the color doppler shows a development of the cystic changes in the fibroid due to the cystic degeneration now we are going to discuss the nose and lips of the fetus during the gestations of about 23 weeks and here we can see a coronal view of the nose and this one is the upper lip and this structure is a lower lip and these are showing the normal appearance with no evidence of facial cleft and now we are going to discuss the knuckle fold measurement this is the axial image of the fetal head at 18 weeks and 4 days and here we can see a cavum septum pellucidum and these are the thalami and uh, these hypoechoic areas are uh, cerebellar hemispheres and here we can see a knuckle fold measurement from the outer margin of the occipital bone to the outer margin of the fetal head surface and it measures about 0.35 cm which is normal its upper limit is about 0.6 cm now we are going to discuss the fetal heart anatomy and this is a four chamber view of the heart this is a view of the fetal thorax shows a four chamber view and uh, here we can see the apex of the heart which is uh, pointing toward the left anterior chest wall and approximately about 45 degrees from the midline and uh, here we can see the right ventricle which is closest to the anterior chest abdominal wall and here we can see this one is the left ventricle this one is the right uh, atria and this one is the left atria and here we can see our uh, intraatrial foramen which is called the foramen ovale and uh, here we can see a left ventricle outflow tract this is a long axis view of the left ventricle and uh, outflow tract shows the ascending aorta which is visualized here and uh, here we can see the right ventricle outflow tract view this one is the right ventricle and uh, it is outflowing into the pulmonary artery and uh, we can also see in the pulmonary wall between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery and now we are going to discuss the fetal stomach this one is a longitudinal image of the fetal abdomen and this one is a transverse image at 27 weeks of gestation and uh, here we can see 
normal appearance of the fetal abdomen in the long tunnel and same in the transverse view in the left upper quadrant and here we can see the kidneys of the fetus this one is a longitudinal image of the right paraspinal region at 32 weeks of gestation and it shows a kidney as an wide structure with the normal peripheral hypoechoecomedullary pyramids and a small amount of fluid is also seen in the renal pelvis and this one is the axial image of the fetal abdomen in the same fetus as we have discussed here and it also shows the kidneys on either side of the spine this one is the fetal spine and uh, this one is a left kidney and this one is a right kidney a small amount of fluid is also seen in the bilateral renal pelvises and this one is a stomach bubble which is also realized in this sonogram now we are going to discuss the urinary bladder in a fetus of about 24 weeks gestation this one is a longitudinal view and this one is a transverse view of the fetal abdomen and here we can see a urinary bladder which is also realized in the same transverse sonogram and uh, here we can also see a stomach bubble which is realized in this longitudinal sonogram now we are going to discuss the fetal spine this is a longitudinal scan plane the midline sagittal image of the cervical and uh, thoracic and the lumbosacral spine shows a normal appearance of the spine and uh, we can see the normal distal tapering of the bony elements in the sacrococcygeal region now we are going to discuss the upper and the lower limbs of the fetus and uh, in the sonogram we can see the upper arm and this one is the forearm this one is the radius and this one is the ulna of the fetus the fetal hand is also realized here with its normal digits now here we can see the fetal lower leg and this one is the thigh of the fetus this ecogenic structure is the femur and here we can also see the tibia and the femora in the lower leg and this one is a fetus foot and now we are going to discuss the fetal gender and uh, in the sonogram we can see the placenta lying posteriorly and uh, here we can see a turtle sign and uh, this one is a fetal penile tissue and uh, this is a scrotal sac which is enclosing the testicles and uh, this sonogram clearly showing the turtle sign which is the sonographic evidence of male fetus and now in the sonogram we can see a female fetus its external genitalia at 31 weeks shows a labia which is consistent with the female fetus and the female fetal genitalia shows a burger sign which is a sonographic evidence of girl gender thanks for watching